Hello, everyone. My name is Bryce Carter, and I am the Cairo Program Director with Solar Unite Neighbors. Tonight, I am excited to talk to you about the Steamboat Springs Downtown's Business Solar Co-op. So first off, Solar Unite Neighbors is a vendor neutral nonprofit organization focused on building a community of people, building a new energy system with rooftop solar at the cornerstone. We help people go solar, join together and fight for the energy rights. And before we get into tonight's presentation, I just wanna take a moment to address the inequities in our current energy system. We know that communities of color, particularly the black community, bear an unfair share of the cost of energy production, but we see fewer benefits. Families of color are disproportionately harmed by higher utility bills and shutoffs. And on top of that, housing discrimination is a barrier to home ownership and thus solar ownership. When Solar United Neighbors started with a group of economically and racially diverse neighbors in Washington, DC, they focused on solar because it helped people pay their electric bills. It also helped them stay in their homes at a time when Washington, DC was being gentrified quickly and across the whole country, uh, there was a financial crisis at that time in 2008. So we know that rooftop solar lets communities invest locally, creates good local jobs, and brings control of the energy system within our reach. We're working toward a new energy system that everyone can participate in, one that is fair and equitable. And we know that for communities like Steamboat Springs and Northwest Colorado, these considerations are vital as we look at having a just and inclusive transition away from fossil fuels into renewable energy. And to be clear, we're not saying that solar is the answer, but we know it's a vital piece of the puzzle in helping build resiliency. So Solar and I neighbors, we got our start with humble beginnings between these two young gentlemen, Walter's on the left and Diego's on the right. And they were inspired to wanting to go solar and make an impact on reducing their climate footprint. Walter ended up doing the thing that he felt uh, was best in his control, which is lobby his mom, Anya Schoolman, to help uh, look at the, how they could go solar at their property. Anya said, that's a great idea, but let's figure out how we can go solar together with other neighbors. Recently, Walter and Diego are running up and down the stairs for all the neighbors, and about 50 households signed up for what became the very first Mount Pleasant Solar Cooperative. It took a couple of years for them to figure out all of the uh, technical details of what, exactly what that meant and having the process of going solar. But ultimately of those 50 neighbors, about 45 of them went solar. So really uh, provide a great example of our solar co-op model. And since then, we've now launched hundreds of solar co-ops across the country, investing over $110 million in communities uh, from Texas to Colorado, all the way to Maryland, Florida, and elsewhere. So Solar Unite Neighbors, we offer memberships. If you sign up and participate for a solar co-op, you automatically become a member. Uh, also, we support people that are just looking to go solar on their own. We have a solar help desk. And some of the benefits that we provide are uh, stickers and magnets. We have a store where you can buy lots of awesome swag. We also have member-only events, and there's additional resources that you can access through our member portal. Now getting to the bulk of tonight's presentation, I'm gonna be talking about three key parts of uh, solar technology, which is going to be really including the 101, kind of teaching you step-by-step -step how solar power works and what it means for you. We're gonna talk about the solar co-op process and particularly the Steamboat Springs uh, Solar Co-op because there's some unique opportunities that we have with uh, this uh, current co-op. And also solar economics. We'll talk a little bit about the payoff and the fact that there is a rebate available from the state with an 80% match. In addition, if you can get the federal tax credit, that's 26% in addition that you'll get back the following year, which basically means that you'll get 106% of the cost of your solar system ultimately paid off if all of that qualifies. So again, really big opportunity for businesses in downtown Steepboat Springs. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start very basically here in terms of talking about solar power. Solar photovoltaic, photo being light, voltaic being power, um, or PV for short, it essentially converts solar energy into electricity. Current uh, mainstream solar panels have about a 20% conversion rate, which means if you take any uh, amount of area on the ground that gets hit by the sunlight, uh, the amount of energy that hits that ground, about 20% of it from the sun can be converted directly into electricity. 
And so uh, what we'll be reviewing over the next couple of minutes is this process where uh, you see on this property, we have the solar panels on the roof that then uh, from that electricity that's being produced is converted into alternating current through a solar inverter. That's the current that we use in our homes and businesses. And then that electricity is going to go into the electrical panel. And from there, it's going to go wherever the demand is. So if you're pulling a lot of electricity, whether you're watching TV or maybe you're running a restaurant and, and uh, it's lunch rush and everybody is in, uh, you'll be able to have all of your uh, the electrons from your solar system go into offsetting that electricity demand. And then if your demand is met, anything excess would actually go back through the utility meter and onto the grid. So when we do talk about solar technology, there are a couple of key terms to talk about. First is kilowatts and kilowatt hours. Your system size is measured in kilowatts. And the way to think about it is it's the total capacity or potential of your solar energy production. Uh, think about a vehicle like a car and what its horsepower would be. When you're going up a hill and you're flooring your engine and you're using that full potential, same thing with a solar system. In this example, we have 12 solar panels. Each panel is 250 watts. And so all combined, that system is a 3,000 watt or 3 kilowatt solar system. Now, to measure your production over time, it's like miles per gallon in the car. You're taking the average over time. And so uh, say that you're producing full electricity in the middle of the day. So from 12 to 2, uh, you're getting that full energy production. This solar system would end up producing 6 kilowatt hours of electricity. Uh, and so you're able to, to again, measure that time over time. And that kilowatt hour is what is going to be seen on your bill in terms of offsetting and uh, looking at your demand. And we'll talk more about that with net metering in a second. It's important to note that most homeowners, as well as businesses, uh, smaller businesses, install anywhere from two kilowatts up to 12 kilowatts of electricity. And this can vary widely. We've had some houses that were over 30 kilowatts because they had a bunch of hot tubs, electric vehicles, all that sort of stuff. So again, solar is a very personal uh, choice and we'll talk more about the considerations that go into sizing the system. So in terms of the solar panel itself, uh, the way it works is that you essentially would take slices of silicon and the, the way physics works with that is that when photons from the sunlight hit it, it does excite electrons and it, there's a physics reaction where those electrons can be captured and funneled through wiring and create uh, a one directional current or direct current. And so a solar panel is basically a bunch of these silicon wafers that are all wired together uh, in parallel creating that electricity. And then all of that is then contained in a very secure uh, panel through encapsulant glass and frames that are very resilient, resilient to obviously take on hail damage and other needs. And then that electricity comes out of the junction box. Then as you have these multiple panels, it's actually the same concepts as each of these, those wafers. You can wire multiple solar panels in parallel and create a larger size solar system and get the energy production you need uh, to help power and offset your home's electricity. Then as that uh, electricity is being produced uh, from that direct current, it needs to be converted into alternating current. And that is what an inverter does. A string inverter does it in one location. And uh, oftentimes a, a string inverter has a lifespan of between 12 to 15 years. Sometimes there's extended warranties beyond that. There's also microinverters, which is an uh, inverter for every single solar panel. And it also comes with a little computer that can monitor your energy production. There are uh, pros and cons to both. Uh, they're basically pretty competitive between the two of them. But for instance, if you have uh, periodic shade uh, for some of your panels during a small part of the day, microinverters might give you a little bit more flexibility without having to slow down the strings of, of solar panels. Uh, otherwise, for a string inverter, uh, it might slow down that production. But Ultimately, this is all something to talk with your installer about to figure out your best options. But if you have an unobstructed roof, either option works great. Then as you have that alternating current that goes into your electrical panel, then it goes uh, wherever it ne it's needed. And ultimately it's a simple connection. Most properties don't need electrical system upgrades, but if you do, um, a lot of times it's because of, of code and it's probably a safety 
uh, it's important to consider safety as well. So if you need to update your panel because of updated electrical code, uh, go ahead and do it. That way you're, you're protected, you're up to date, as well as just making sure that your solar system can perform optimally. But again, a lot of electrical systems don't even need to have an upgrade, uh, especially if you're uh, a smaller business in this case, as we look at the business co-op. Of course, where does the solar system go? It goes often on the roof. Um, and there's a lot of ways to be able to do that. Here we have an asphalt shingle roof where they can uh, attach the system for fracking is attached directly into the awnings of the property. You can see that there are a variety of fracking systems from flashing to weighted ballast systems, standoff beams, clamps, and pitch pockets. So there's a variety of options. And certainly, uh, this I know this question comes up in Steamboat Springs especially, what about snow loads? And that's part of the installer's responsibility is to evaluate your roof, evaluate the age of it and the structure and integrity of it, making sure that uh, the snow shedding is going to be appropriate to hide with the solar system. And then uh, depending if you do have a metal seam roof, you may not even need to make penetrations onto your roof. Uh, it can actually clamp on and do a really good job at that. And uh, especially as we talked about with snow loads, uh, as we've seen with a lot of metal roofs, the snow would just shed off of it fairly well. So it says something to think about depending on the structure of your roof, you know, where that shedding is going to occur. Uh, and again, those are factors to talk with your installer about. There's also, if you have flat roofs, a lot of options uh, connecting parapet to parapet racking. So in this case, they're using I-beams and putting solar panels on top of that. Uh, and again, uh, having to evaluate the, the weight to make sure that uh, it is structurally sound as well as understanding snow loads is going to be an important part of the installer working with you directly. In addition, if for any reason that your rooftop solar does not work, the option of ground mounts to solar might be uh, presented to you if you have extra property. I know downtown is a little crowded, so um, this may not be an option for a lot of folks. There is also commute solar options, though I know those are limited subscriptions. But again, to take full advantage of the current rebate, um, it would be a on-site solar. One of the initial things that we do when you are going to solar is we look at your address and look at the roof through Google Maps or any other uh, web-based LIDAR uh, mapping to evaluate, you know, do you have uh, shading around your house? Are there trees or buildings that might periodically shade your house or uh, business throughout the year? I'm um, looking, thinking about both summer and winter years. We also look to make sure that there's enough uh, unobstructed space. So we look for a minimum of 200 square feet of roof space to be able to install our solar system, as well as make sure you have a good exposure. So southern exposure is the best because you can take advantage of that year round sun, but also due west and due east could work well. One important factor to note, especially now as we see what's been happening in California and Texas, is that if the power goes out at your property, uh, your solar system automatically turns off as well. And that's a safety mechanism to make sure that those electrons are not going onto the grid when the linemen come out to do their work. Ultimately, you're going to need batteries if you want to maintain power during these types of outages. Ways to think about uh, getting backup power, uh, if you happen to have a lot of frequent utility outages, if you have any critical loads from well pumps, medical equipment, maybe data servers, things that can never be offline, uh, making sure that those stay online for batteries. Or well, uh, just resiliency, you know, looking at emergency and disaster preparedness, making sure that you're prepared. Um, and so battery, basically the, the economics of batteries right now is really focused on having that power backup. We are starting to see some markets move toward time of use rates, which is the cost of electricity changes throughout the day. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna save you a lot of money. As a business, uh, you also could use battery storage to offset demand charges. So once you hit a certain point, once you're above that point, you get a premium cost added to your bill. So batteries can be programmed to offset that amount and save you more money. So there are factors that uh, to consider within that. Just as a quick example, uh, this is a residential uh, property, but still uh, it applies is uh, the Johnson family lose power several times a year. Uh, they lose sometimes their power for the entire day. So they want to make sure they can power their refrigerator, a small microwave, some lights, their outlets, uh, and the cable modem, but not power heavy duty equipment such as stove, dryer, and electric water heater that take a high demand because they know that's going to be more expensive. 
So ultimately they went with a six kilowatt hour battery bank, knowing that it could be fully charged throughout a day or so uh, from their solar panels. But it is worth noting that if for any reason you don't have sunshine, say there's a snow event or maybe a couple of days of storms, uh, you won't be able to re-earn that production if you don't have power. So again, just factors to consider among all this. And finally, this is just some example pricing, but it does show that there is significant increase of cost when it comes to battery storage. Uh, and I'll note that the rebate that's available for businesses in downtown, batteries are not going to be applied uh, in this current rebate. So this would be a cost directly for the business. So that concludes kind of the general summary of how solar works. So it's a solar array, uh, again, has a production, goes to the inverter to be able to uh, convert to all same current, goes to electric meter where the, the demand is, and then any overflow goes for the utility meter which is then credited through a policy called net metering. And net metering essentially allows that flow of electricity to and from the customer. And so when you produce one kilowatt hour of electricity, um, you're able to uh, help offset a consumption of one kilowatt hour of electricity. And we generate more than you use, the excess electricity goes through your power bill. You can get uh, some credited month to month, but ultimately, uh, you want to size your system to meet your demand up to 100% of your demand. There's not much of an economic incentive for anything above 100%. So that's something to keep in mind and that's what we'll be designing, uh, especially with the business co-op, what those sizes would be. So again, some amount of electricity produced, or sorry, used, minus the amount of electricity produced, and that's how you get your electric bill. And just to give an example, it's before solar, you can see the, the cost of electricity. This is a residential service charge. Um, again, this is simply just an example. And then you still have your interconnection fees uh, based on the utility, um, those base charges. But you can see, again, there could be significant savings depending on a variety of factors of your solar system. I'm going to do kind of a rapid fire round of questions that we typically get regarding uh, solar. First, in terms of warranties, there are three main warranties to consider. First is the workmanship warranty, and that's from the installer themselves. So in the, if they do any roof penetrations or for the installation work, there's a warranty to protect uh, that quality. So if there's any issues, often that's anywhere from 10 to 25 years, depending on the installer and, and what their, uh, their preferences are. Another warranty is the manufacturer's warranty. And you would know fairly quickly if there's any issue with your solar panel um, as it gets turned on and uh, the production value. And so if there's any issues with that, uh, certainly that could be pretty covered through the production warranty. And then lastly, the power production warranty. Uh, and so what that is, is that says, what we often see is that your solar system will be no less efficient, uh, let's just say 80%, efficient over 25 years. So if you have a 10 kilowatt solar system after 25 years, its production will be no less than uh, eight kilowatts of uh, capacity. Solar systems do through the, the physics uh, lose efficiency just a little bit every year, though we are seeing a lot of manufacturers have upwards of 90% efficiency on the market. So again, that's something just to highlight the fact that solar panels are a resilient product that is a known quantity. And I've known folks that have 50 watt panels actually from Northwest Colorado that have been able to, to keep those running for decades and even beyond what a 25 year warranty could provide. And then in terms of insurance, uh, typically insurance uh, will have a standard coverage rate. If it's on your property, uh, you shouldn't see any major changes. Uh, if you do see some changes from your insurance, uh, it might be time to shop around. Some of them do offer discounts. But again, uh, we've not seen a lot of issues with that in terms of just making sure that they're aware that's on the roof. If there is any hail damage and your roof is damaged, uh, that coverage would include taking off the solar panels, fixing the roof, and paying those panels back on. Maintenance otherwise is fairly low maintenance. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the string inverter might need to have replacement after 12 to 15 years to pay on the model. Um, otherwise, uh, right now, we're getting a lot of fire, fire smoke from Utah and uh, not, uh, further west and certainly California and Oregon. So, you know, if we do see a lot of uh, accumulation of dust and debris uh, just from all those fires or pollen even, uh, every now and again might be okay to wash down the panels, but it's not necessary. So, again, it's just something to keep an eye on. 
Uh, I already mentioned in terms of the length of uh, how long do systems last, they can last for many decades. And I definitely met people that have had older models of panels that still are cranking along. In terms of uh, homeowners associations, um, there are, uh, they can have a voice in terms of where the solar can go, um, but they can't be prohibitive in terms of any additional costs that come with that. So uh, we've not run into many issues with historic districts in Colorado so far, but if you have any issues, let us know, we'll be happy to help. There are more restrictions when it comes to historic district, but again, uh, reach out to them, whether it's insurance, HOA, or historic district, start that conversation and, um, you know, if you need any support, let us know. We have some guides that are available. And lastly, uh, hail is often a question that we get, as well as snow. And again, for a steamboat, uh, generally, if uh, these are resilient products, one of Colorado's most expensive natural disasters was a hailstorm back in, uh, I believe it was 2017. You know, the ground zero was in Golden, right where the National Renewable Energy Lab is. And they had over 3,000 solar panels out in the field, and only one was damaged from that event. So it uh, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but certainly if there was any significant damage, insurance would cover that. Okay, so let's keep going and talk a little bit about the solar co-op. So uh, like I said, the Steamboat Springs Solar Co-op is a little bit special. We're approaching things slightly differently because of this unique opportunity. Um, the state of Colorado legislature did pass a uh, funding to support a 80% match rebate. And this is with the Main Street program and Steamboat Main Street. And uh, that means that basically you would put 20% down of the cost of solar and uh, you'll be able to get this 80% match automatically, which would be going to the installer. Also, in addition to this, because the solar co-op program is a group buy program, uh, we provide that support throughout the process. You also can get connected with fellow solar enthusiasts, we really provide a kind of a streamlined process of going solar, as well as a network of people that are really excited to be able to talk about solar and, and show off their systems and be part of kind of a growing solar movement. So there's a lot of advantages to it, even outside of the rebate. But again, uh, this is just uh, a really cool opportunity. And so here's what we're doing right now in terms of the going solar process with the Downtown Business Solar Co-op. Um, so right now we're in August and then through September, we're going to be doing a lot of education in the community, providing uh, information materials to uh, businesses and especially property owners to make sure they're aware of this opportunity. And then the very first step is to sign up on our website, which is solarunitedneighbors.org slash steamboat. And then we'll provide a preliminary assessment looking at your roof to make sure one is good to go in terms of all the things I talked about earlier, shading, making sure it's got enough size, uh, space and everything else. But we also will be working with a consultant to work on your roof to evaluate from your bill, um, just uh, an estimate of what the solar size solar system you could have and what that cost would be. We're going to use that cost estimate to then apply uh, for this rolling grant opportunity, this 80% match. And then as we secure that funding, that's when we'll disseminate with uh, everybody and, and allow you to decide to proceed with your project. Um, we're gonna try to do this in bulk through uh, ongoing requests. Just to make sure that uh, everyone that is uh, first come first served, able to take advantage of this opportunity. So again, uh, to recap, it's sign up online, we'll do an initial assessment, we we'll use that to go ahead and apply for the funding with the grant, and then once that's awarded, we will be able to move forward with uh, having uh, a selection process, and that's going to be into October, November. Our own members, we're vendor neutral, but our members will form a selection committee to review bids from installers and ultimately decide through a competitive request for proposal process which installer will best serve the group at large. Um, so we will facilitate that process as well as review all those bits that come in to make sure that we call references, check licensing, make sure that equipment and warranties are up to par with what we see in the marketplace. So then our members are able to make an informed decision who they think would best serve the group. Once that installer is set, then they will go ahead and begin the installations and we'll continue to offer uh, this as a service and, and being able to have businesses look at going solar for as long as we can, but all projects have to be completed by the end of June, 2022. So that's our big limitation. Uh, so in terms of this process, I'm just encouraging you, uh, as of now, it's completely free. There is no obligation to go solar, though we would like to know 
um, how likely you are just to make sure you're in the queue and to take advantage of this opportunity. So um, go ahead and fill out that form and we'll be in touch and working with you from there. As I mentioned with the selection committee, uh, all the, we do look at a variety of factors. So it's the price, the equipment quality, warranties, experience, whether or not they're a local company and a, a variety of other considerations too. So uh, we wanna make sure we have a holistic look at, again, um, what the value is of, of the installer that and the bids that come in. So I'll talk holistically about solar economics and then I'll show you some of the exciting numbers that this unique opportunity presents for you. First, we have seen that the cost of solar has come down pretty dramatically and you can see that we also see additional savings with the solar co-op process across the country. Um, and so you can see the dollar per watt difference between those two. Um, so we do see some savings um, and this is an average. It doesn't always mean that you will see savings compared to um, other installers, but that's part of the selection process is to make sure the installer, even if they might have an average price or even above average, that you're getting the quality service. And again, the trend has been that there are savings because economies of scale. Another way to look at it is that you do see this reduce, reduction of cost over time. So this is over the last 10 years. And you can see how uh, the soft costs have remained high, but the system component costs have come down. And so uh, part of our role as an organization is to provide community outreach and education, which helps alleviate the soft cost uh, demands for a solar installer. So ultimately, uh, for them, it can cost thousands of dollars just to have one contract and be able to, to work from uh, initial conversation all the way to signing that contract. So we save them thousands of dollars. We pass on that cost for the co-op program to save money for the customer. And then we do ask for a little bit of a development fee, $600, to help support our mission for what we do. And that's, that's how we operate as a nonprofit. And then uh, also it's important to note that the federal tax credit is decreasing. Uh, it will be at 26% through the end of next year. And a lot of people say, well, what about Congress? We'll see what Congress does. And uh, honestly, there's no guarantees that this will be extended. And uh, we really just don't know where things are gonna go. So uh, it, it's a risk to, to wait it out. And what we know is what we know. And right now the 26% is holding for at least one more year, but uh, really, what is driving the opportunity right now for the Steamboat Spring Solar Co-op is uh, this pricing breakdown. So we did determine that the average price is $3.27 a watt for the region. Um, and so you can see uh, four kilowatts to eight kilowatts. These are basically examples of what we see as a standard solar system for like uh, average house um, and thinking about the roof space on that house. So I, I think looking at Sally imagery of uh, Steamboat Springs, we we'll probably see a similar range for some businesses, but we'll likely see some larger ones too. So just keep that in mind. So we start with that average price. There is the 80% Main Street grant rebate, which is uh, you can actually get up to 150,000. And it's, this rebate is not just for solar, it's also for energy efficiency improvement. So we're really excited to work with partners like the Yampa Valley Sustainability Council to uh, help get the word out about these energy efficiency rebates so uh, businesses can holistically take advantage of all these different elements. Um, so again, you can get that 80% match. So that means right off the bat, if you have a four kilowatt system, you're paying out of pocket about $2,600 or an eight kilowatt system, just over uh, $5,200. But what's really fantastic of this opportunity is that there is the federal tax credit. So um, as long as that your contract shows the overall amount of your system cost, uh, you'll be able to claim that full cost on your, your uh, tax credit. And that means on the following year, you would get that $3,400 or that $6,800 back. So after one year, you would actually earn additional uh, rebates. You actually be in the black in terms of uh, the size of system that you go with. Uh, so obviously that only applies if the federal tax credit applies to you as a business um, and depending, excuse me, how you are taxed. So uh, again, at the end of the day, we can't give any tax advice, talk to your tax accountant uh, or CPA, but again, uh, based on a preliminary assessment of this uh, calculation, it's, it's a really good deal. And then on top of that, uh, your solar system obviously would be offsetting the cost of electricity. So over the lifetime, uh, the minimum lifetime of 25 years, what we would see, um, you're looking at a profit of anywhere from 
uh, essentially 13 to, to 26, $27,000, depending on the size of your system. And obviously it gets larger after that. So uh, again, this, these economics right here is a reason to, you got nothing to lose to try to take advantage of this opportunity. And then otherwise, this is how we typically see savings with solar and the uh, payoff over time. Um, so if you have a cash loan, uh, that's what it looks like. And it's anywhere from an eight to 12 year payback. But obviously with being able to fully recover your cost within a year, uh, this does applies a lot less. Now there are a few considerations uh, as you are a property owner or business. Uh, again, the tax credit does is at 26%. It will go down to 10% and actually stay there indefinitely afterwards. So um, there'll still be a tax credit even after it faces uh, down. There's also, uh, you can apply for uh, depreciation on the total cost. Again, that matters less because of uh, the opportunity on, the, the, on hand. You have that warranty that lasts at least 25 years. It can increase the resale value of your business um, due to decreased electricity cost. It can also be paired with storage if you're facing high electric demand charges. And so you can check your electric bill for that uh, depending on what applies. And uh, you can talk with your account again, talking about that uh, accelerated depreciation. Another factor I do wanna talk about is uh, how your electric bill is paid. And this is gonna be really important because if you are a property owner that has multiple tenants, um, you're gonna to need to evaluate how, uh, how are they connected to electricity? The best case scenario is that there is one meter that then uh, you subdivide as the owner and charge everybody their electricity rates respectfully. Um, if there are multiple meters, there's a couple ways of going about that. Depending on the size of your roof, each tenant could try to have their own carve out of a solar project on the roof, or you could try to upgrade your, your meters to be under a master meter. So that way uh, you can have your solar system attached to that. If you do have common area space, you could size your solar system to meet the demand for that common area. Um, but I know for a lot of people that's a minimal cost because you're just talking about a few lights. And so it, it can be more challenging to look at the options as it relates to the um, multiple tenant buildings, but that's something that we can definitely work with you on and explore what those opportunities might be. All right, then uh, we also have financing options. Again, uh, this is for, uh, a lot of folks that, again, don't have access to re this rebate, or if you're looking at financing the, the, um, that initial 20%, there are, uh, if you're doing a home buying, obviously home equity line of credit, but there's also a lot of standard loans, solar loans, bridge loans, and other loans that you can take advantage of. Uh, you can refinance and uh, include your solar system either way. There are some credit unions you could take advantage of. There are leasing options, though we always recommend that you read the fine print because those can be really challenging in terms of uh, ownership, especially if you ever sell and move away. Uh, there's sometimes clauses that say you have to buy out the system. Um, so just, again, be aware of that as well as what the, the actual paybacks would be. And it is worth noting that there is the Rural Energy for America program, which offers additional grants and incentives for uh, businesses in rural areas, which would include Steamboat Springs. Uh, though, honestly, again, uh, that doesn't apply too much in terms of just the savings that we're seeing based on just the, the rebate and the, the tax credit. So what's next? As I mentioned, the best thing to do right now is to join the Downtown Solar Co-op by going to solarunitedneighbors.org slash steamboat. We will begin processing your application as soon as we get that and we can evaluate again uh, your solar potential and use that as a means to begin the grant process and see if you'd be able to qualify after that point. Otherwise, we need your help. We wanna make sure all the business owners in downtown Steamboat Springs can take advantage of this opportunity. So help tell your friends and neighbors to make sure that people get really excited and plugged in and, and tie us in. I also wanna mention that uh, Soul United Neighbors as a, a nonprofit, we are working to make sure that we are ensuring solar is equitable and accessible for everybody. Uh, we're very fortunate that we have this rebate opportunity in Stevo Springs, but many people are less fortunate and not able to have that. And so as we face the urgent problems of climate change, the economic downturn and social injustice, we are launching a 30 million solar homes campaign, which is basically pursuing a variety of policies that can ensure that we meet some of these goals around uh, supporting 
especially frontline communities and, um, and others, low and middle income Americans, to be able to get the access to solar. Um, so that's part of what we do as an organization and just making sure that accessibility happens. And you're welcome to sign a petition and participate in terms of uh, becoming a partner. So feel free to check that out at 30millionsolarhomes.org. And again, you can also check out our website for a variety of other resources. And I just really want to thank you for your time tonight and being able to uh, watch this presentation. I'll remain uh, available for questions. You can reach myself and our team at co-team at solarunitedneighbors.org. And uh, I'll be regularly in town. And so we'll try to present when we will have a variety of in-person events that you can come by and say hello at. So again, thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful night.